Hey everybody, we're checking out our Kingdoms of Avalon Reckoning today, which is um, a brand new game you guys are developing. I'm here with Sean, and um, can you tell me, I guess, a little bit about the game? Well, sure. Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning is set in Amalur, which is a world that R.A. Salvatore, who's a fantasy author, wrote 10,000 years of history. We are taking place in that 10,000 years in a place called the Age of Arcana. Uh, so Reckoning is based around in the Age of Arcana. Uh, the story of the player is that you are the first person to have come back from the dead. Now, in this world of Amalur, everybody's fates are set. So you know who you're going to marry, when you're going to marry them, where you're going to die. And so people who can read the weave of fate called Fate Weavers, uh, can tell you all about your life. It's kind of depressing. Um, but then the player who dies and then comes back essentially is the butterfly in the butterfly effect. Every person that they talk to, everything that they do, never should have been done. So everything is getting undone, everything is being thrown into chaos, and the player is, is a real and tangible agent of change. One thing RPGs do a lot is that uh, you kind of have to pick your character and then your class, and you, you kind of stick with that throughout the game. Uh, but you guys are trying something different with, with destiny cards. Can you tell us a bit about how, how they work? Sure. So the destiny system is how we assign the idea of a class in Reckoning. So we start as a blank slate, and you don't have to pick what you're going to be, but throughout the tutorial, we give you a chance to play with everything. Throw a couple of spells, stab a couple people with daggers, check out a sword, kind of figure out the person that you want to be. So by the time you're done with the tutorial and your first level up comes, that's when you're presented with all of the, all the combat skills and things that you can do in our game. Now, if you think that you liked the daggers during, during the tutorial, you can put more points into some dagger damage. Maybe give yourself a couple of sneak attacks or uh, some dagger specials where you can dash through people and then stab them in the back. Um, as you're doing that, there may have been a spell during the tutorial that you liked, and so you put a couple points into that. After a while, uh, two or three levels, the game will see, hey, it looks like you're building kind of a, a hybrid because you put some into this magic and you've also put some stuff into a rogue, and so it will give you a, a mage-rogue hybrid that will, as you look at all of the destinies and the cards and you choose to assign yourself that destiny, uh, it will give you some percent chance to crit, which is a nice rogue thing when you're stabbing people in the back, but also mana regeneration because you're wanting to be casting a lot of spells. So that was one example. You can actually go pure might, which is our warrior. You can go with rogue, you can go with sorcery, or you can do any sort of hybrid secondary color, or you can do even jack of all trades. There are some people who just like they like uh, having a lot of health, or being able to take a lot of damage, and they like being able to shoot bows, uh, and they like being able to use uh, one of our unique weapons, I think, in the game is the Chakram, which are kind of like a Xena meets Tron meets Kroll kind of throwing weapon. And uh, so we even allow for it, we call it the Jack of All Trades Destinies, and uh, they'll give you uh, bonuses that none of the other trees give you, uh, and really complement the way that you're choosing to play. Uh, how open is, I guess, the world in terms of doing the quests? Can you kind of you know do your own type of thing and work your own way through the game or is it like a strict path you've kind of got to follow and oh sure uh, again the tutorial definitely wants to take you through for the first half hour of the game that you play it, it wants to to teach the game to you so that you aren't just thrown out in the middle with, with no help but as soon as you make it through that first little area the world is wide open you can literally go anywhere that you want now if you run into an area that has monsters that are a lot stronger than you it's going to be a very short running through the world that you do um, but you can do the main quest you can do side quests uh, I personally uh, not as a producer but as a player have put 40 hours into into the game uh, and I've done all the side quests in the first area and had a blast with it um, but you can if you choose just do the main quest. Uh, there's still a lot of game to play if you do it that way. Well, you guys as a studio have um, a lot of big names behind this game as well. Um, Ken Rolston is the guy behind games like uh, The Elder Scrolls Morrowind and mm -hmm. Oblivion. Um, I've watched a lot of interviews with him as well. He's very energetic. Is he as crazy as he comes across on you know in the office? Or? He is a brilliant mad scientist. Yeah. Um, one of the things that's great about Ken is is that he's indefatigable. There's just no you can't get him down. And so uh, it really helps. We're putting a lot of our lives into this game, and we're having a lot of fun making it. But some days are really long, and, and Ken is there to bring a ukulele in or to sit down and play some of the game and say, you know, it would make this a lot better. And he's right, but. He's got this above it all view that helps not only guide the project, but also helps guide and lift the team. So yeah, it's it's great working with him. Yeah, and another person you've also got is a, a Todd McFarlane. I mean, people in the comic book industry would 
I mean, that's a big name there as well, the guy that created Spawn. Um, he's worked on Spider-Man. Um, and and your, your environments and the world looks really gorgeous and pretty. Um, how much of an emphasis does he have on the world you guys have created? Well, definitely it's great working with him. He, he actually meets with our art team once a week. Uh, he's out in Arizona, and, and we're doing our thing in Baltimore, but we're able to load all of our art, um, screenshots of the game, concept art, animations, uh, character models, and when the camera comes on and it shows his uh, Wacom tablet, he's got our stuff up and he's able, the comments that he makes are just spot on for architecture, for character design, and he's able to do a lot of things. Um, again, it's weekly input, and so I think a lot of what you're seeing in Reckoning is, is definitely blessed by the hand of Todd, influenced, uh, and it's really, it's great working with him too. Yeah, and just before we started recording, you were telling me about, um, you guys have got Winnie the Pooh in the game. The, the, the voice actor that does that. <laughs> we do. Jim, we have a lot of really spectacular voice talent. Uh, Jim Cummings specifically does the voice of Gadflow, who is the uh, the king of the Winter Fay and, and kind of the big bad is set up in the intro of our game. Um, one day after we, we finished a, a lot of recording, he's got some pretty hideous lines being a fairly hideous character. Mm. Uh, and as we got to the very end uh, and we were getting ready to turn off the mic, he started reading some of the lines uh, in the Winnie the Pooh voice. So uh, maybe that's collector's edition stuff. That sounds really cool. <laughs> anyway, um, well, we're looking really forward to the game. It's, uh, I mean, this year's just finished, but next year's kicking off nice and early with your game. Yeah, so it's coming out February 9th yes. in, in Australia, 2012, on PC, PS3, and Xbox 360. Thank you very much for having a chat. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming back. Cheers.